Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project start slash unboxing video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech late production German Tiger 1. Like the last ArmorTech Panther project that I just finished off, this project here is being built for a private collector and is a commission build. For availability as well as pricing information for a build like this, you can contact me from my email address, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. For the base model, we'll be using this partially started ArmorTech late production German Tiger 1 kit. This model here was acquired second hand, and even though it looks to be assembled, it is actually more or less in a mock-up state, which will make this assembly and reassembly of the parts much easier. We will be going over the kit's background as well as what the Armor Tech kit supplies you with in this video. Another thing as to point out, if we notice just like the Panther build, because of the weight of this model, it will be built in this alternative location as opposed to my usual workshop where I film all my other project builds. Another tip for if anyone who's watching this video who is interested in getting an Armor Tech model, either second hand or starting off as a fresh kit, is acquiring a lift like the one we have here. This hydraulic lift is pretty much a mandatory piece of equipment if you're working on these ArmorTech tanks. The lift itself makes working on the model very easy in that you can jack it up to your current height and you don't have to bend over as much. Plus, a model this heavy makes picking it up and putting it on a table very difficult. The lift alleviates a lot of those problems. The lift that you see here was purchased from Northern Tool. However, I've seen similar models offered in such retailers as Harbor Freight. First off, let's have a quick walk around the model. As for background on the model, the ArmorTech Tiger 1 is probably one of the more prolific kits that have been released by ArmorTech, and ArmorTech has been producing them in production batches that go all the way back to 2003. The version that we see here was their latest release and is from their 2012 batch. This version here of this release is one of its, since it's their latest release, has all of the modifications as well as all of the current improvements that ArmorTech has been adding to these models since they were released in 2003. As a coincidence, in the background, we have two other ArmorTech models that belong in my personal collection. The vehicle on the right is their Henschel Production King Tiger from 2009 release, and to the left is their early production Tiger 1. Both of these kits can be seen running in my video listings, and <clears throat> many and all both of them have had a lot of detail upgrades added to them. Their Tiger One is from their 2003 release, and is actually their second incarnation of the Tiger One. As and it's so far current as of the date of this video, is their only early production that they've made. Since then, they've made a lot of improvements to the model in both running performance-wise as well as detail and even with ease of construction and all of those modifications are present on this late production Tiger 1. As the build goes on I will go over some of the details that make this model a lot more improved than their previous offerings. Now the model that you see here is currently a static model. There are no electronics mounted to the inside. It's just a static metal shell at this point. That is the reason why the gun is as loose as it is now. Obviously, once the option packs and the electronics get fit inside the turret, the gun will stay at a constant height and will be functional like that of the way the kit is supposed to be designed. More information about the suspension as well as the 
internal workings of the running gear will be discussed in more detail in an upcoming video. Until then, here are some basics of the model suspension. As what has been mentioned several times, this model represents the late production Tiger I. This is evident from the steel wheels as opposed to the rubber rim wheels from the earlier production batches of the Tiger I. The steel wheels that you see on this model are actually the exact same versions that are found on the King Tiger kit from Armortech and disassemble in a similar way. The only difference to them are the hubcaps themselves as the King Tiger had a different hubcap assembly. However, just like on their Panther as well as their King Tiger, to get access to remove the road wheel, they have a threaded cap which once removed gets you access to their Allen bolt which once removed the whole suspension can start coming apart. Just like all the rest of the current and newer production Armor Tech kits including their King Tiger is that the kits themselves come with a full spectrum of photo etch brass parts. If we notice all the row wheels have their bolt tension straps molten on. These are a nice fe detail feature and are very similar to that of the real one. The photo etch is throughout this build, or is throughout this model. Uh, it's mainly located on the running gear and the suspension, including the road wheels as well as the drive sprocket. The sprocket itself is a much more improved version from their earlier releases in that the sprocket itself assembles just like the real one. The original Armortech sprocket was a single piece casting that had the teeth of the sprocket casted as one piece. While the newer release, the hub here is a separate metal casting from the two drive teeth. The two drive teeth are laser cut and mount onto the hub via fasteners just like on the real vehicle. On the idler wheel, the kit supplies you with the appropriate smaller Tiger One idler wheel. On the Tiger One, throughout its production life, it had two types of rear idler wheels. The early and mid-production vehicles had a larger wheel, while on the later production vehicles, like this model here, the idler was reduced in size. Which is noticeable in that it is a lot smaller than that of the main road wheel. If you look at an early production Tiger, the idler wheel is a lot bigger than the version that we see here on this vehicle. As for breaking down the kit, let's go ahead and start taking it apart and seeing what we have. First, the barrel is just inserted for mock-up purposes and is currently removable. Let's first take off the top deck of the turret. First, remove the copula, as well as the armor packs, a Tiger One loader hatch, which I'll be getting more into detail as the build goes on. The tart roof is one solid piece of aluminum plate that has been bent. This is very similar to that of their early production build in that the top deck was a solid metal plate. The only difference is that on the newer kits, more, less steel is being used and more reliance on aluminum, which is not only beneficial for weight, but also you don't have to worry about the model corroding or rusting on you as the model begins to age. Also, since this is a late production Tiger, the turret top roof is significantly thicker than that on the earlier production Tigers. This was done on the late production Tigers because of the added threat of aerial bombardment. The thicker roof gave some more better protection to the Tiger crews than on the earlier Tiger 1 releases. And here's the interior of the turret with the top plate removed. As of note, the turret on this model is significantly different than that of their earlier and first production Tiger One batches. The original Armor Tech Tiger One, the turret body that we see here was actually a solid piece of aluminum casting. This was changed on several years into their production runs that Armor Tech have done in that instead of having a solid casting, which required more tooling and more cost, they went with a bent uh, aluminum plate design that we have here. 
the tar plate was first laser cut and then bent in a computerized bending machine. This is more realistic than the casted version in that the real German Tiger one, the turret was manufactured in a similar way. The interior has its interior mount. Over here we could see the area in which the machinery will be added for elevation of the gun. This their system is very similar to the version that I did on their Panther that I have in my video listings. Here goes the turret once removed to get a quick view of the bottom. The bottom base of the turret is all CNC'd as one piece of aluminum, just like the rest of the build. And the, we have access here to the turret turner gear. If we notice, for optimum strength, instead of using aluminum, they went with a sheet plate or a steel plate that has been laser cut with the, the gear teeth in it. These gear teeth would mesh with a small turret turner gear box, which gets mounted to the upper deck. In addition to the turret turner gear, we have here a brass bushing that the turret actually rotates on. This bushing actually gets fitted to the top deck like we see here. More information about this will, per will be discussed as the build continues. Before I go ahead and remove the top upper deck, the model appears to have some aftermarket parts fitted to it. The two bow hatches as well as this cable horn here are all aftermarket. The hatches are made out of white metal and are very nicely done and have been properly assembled by the previous builder. They feature nice crisp details on the castings and are a nice addition to the model. In addition to the hatch, we can see here the addition from Armortech of the hatch bushing that was not present on their earlier releases. On their initial on their first Tiger releases, this ring wasn't present and the hatch would simply mount flush to the hull. However, with the bushing added, you have the appropriate gap that is between the hatch and the upper deck, which is present on the real vehicle. As, as for the cable horn, it is a solid bronze casting. The, I'm certain that this actually comes with the newer production Armor Tech kits in that my King Tiger came with the same cast bronze horn. As well as the horn, it also has these very nice cast brass or bronze wing nuts that are actually threaded and are fully functional. If you notice, I unscrew them and the horn is removable. Not only is the horn removable, but the center pivot pin is also functional. The point of the pin is that you would take the tow cable eye and slip it into each one of these hooks, lock the horn back in place, and now the cable won't be able to lot fall off of the track horn or of the uh, cable horn that we have here. Then to stow it back into its stowed position, you would position it as such on the upper deck and tighten the bolts. This is, more, this is a feature that is more common on the mid-production as well as late-production Tigers and is not found on the early production units. Moving our way to the rear deck, we have here the grill work. The grill work itself is all made out of cast aluminum and is designed to be hinged like on the real vehicle. Now unlike the early production versions of Tiger 1 that have the FIFL system here which kind of keep these grill works in their place, on this model, without the grill work present, it will be very easy to get into these positions here of the hull. More information and detail on this location will follow as the build progresses. Towards the sides of the model, we have the gun cleaning rods as well as the tow cable mounts. These gun cleaning rods here are part of the Armor Tech kit and include both the wooden dowel rods as well as the turned brass end caps. These pieces here are, are non-functional, however, do have their threading machined into the brass tips over here. With the non-hinged pieces removed, I will now be able to remove the upper deck. Currently, the upper deck is not bolted on or fastened in any way, so it should simply just pop off, like so. One recent addition on these Undertech Tiger 1s is the bulkhead that we see here. The original Tiger 1 also had a bulkhead like this, however, it was just a straight laser cut piece of steel and did not have the intricate detail that's molded into it. The bulkhead is present on both the front 
of the hull, which is where it would be found on the real vehicle, as well as in the rear portion of the vehicle here. It's just a nice touch. However, since this model will not have an interior, it, this detail really isn't needed. Also, as of note, the top deck, like I mentioned earlier, is made out of aluminum, just like the top portion of the turret. This is, again, a nice feature in that you don't have to worry about it's lighter, as well as you don't have to worry about the top deck corroding or rusting on you as the model ages, or if the model ever gets any moisture on its surface. And here goes the interior with its torsion bar system exposed. Like all their Armortech tanks, the Tiger Ones as well as their Panthers have real, a real torsion bar suspension. Some of the other 1-6 scale tank manufacturers, in lieu of using torsion bars, use, like to use big coil springs. Torsion bars are, are similar to the real tank and work very well when assembled properly. One big difference between the newer version of the Tiger One and the early production version of the Tiger One that Armortech released is how the torsion bars mount to the model's hull. If we notice here, there are two aluminum squares that run the entire length of the lower hull. These lower squares is what mount secure the torsion bars to the hull sides. It gives the squares give you a very nice bond and give you lots of points of contact for the suspension as well as the hull rigidity itself. On the original Armortech tank, instead of this one-piece bar system, which came when they did their Panther, each torsion bar unit had small little sep separate metal blocks which would need to be bolted to the hull. This system was a little difficult. However, once installed and installed properly, it does hold up the tank's weight and performs as needed. This system, though, however, is more efficient and is far easier to assemble when you're working on the model. As we can see, the previous builder mounted the exhaust to the tank. This can be seen with those two brass fittings there on either end. This would be for the plumbing for the model smoke system. More information on that is to follow, as well as the idler mount system that we have there. More information on that is to follow as well. As we pan across the hall, we have here the actual date of manufacture, as well as the number that this model was on the production run. If we notice the model is a 2012 release and this particular unit is number three off of the production line. So it's actually a very low production number. As well as the model itself, the model also has a whole box here full of accessories as well as other parts that the previous builder didn't get to put on the model yet. Right on top we have the certificate of authenticity which is a nice touch that Armortech does lately with their releases and it confirms that this is production number three from the product first 2012 production late production batch and it is number three of six, of 60 units that were produced. Getting into the box we see here some photo etch. These here are photo etch grill covers. If you notice they're a lot like the ones that you see on the smaller scale models like the Tamiya's or the DML's only they're much bigger. The grill work that you see here, the grenade grills, are a very nice touch and in the past would have to be either fabricated from scratch or would have to be acquired from an aftermarket source. They give you enough grills to equip one Tiger One, which is you have the two large grills for the radiator intake as well as the two smaller grills for the air exits from the fans. Over here we have an kit supplied cast bronze Bosch light. If you go to my Panther build, I have that model has the same exact Bosch light fitted and is a very nice addition and is very nicely detailed. It's a very recommend it's a very highly recommended piece on these radar control tanks and with these armor techs come with the model from the factory. We have some other smaller bits here. They look like pieces for hinges as well as internal braces. More will be discussed about this as the build goes on. We even have here two axis caps that go on the lower hull. Digging through, we have some more parts. These are the bin lids. Uh, this, yeah, this here is the loader's hatch, which is found on the side of the turret. It's a solid CNC casting. 
and is nicely done, most likely will be used. This appears to be another cable horn, as typically these German tanks have two of them. Also, if you notice, there are a lot of spare parts in here from the aftermarket supplier Armor Packs, who's a UK-based 1-6 scale tank part company, and his parts are highly recommended. More of his parts are seen here. This is the cast resin fire extinguisher from Armor Packs, which is, I've mentioned before, a nice piece. And this here is his Armor Packs machine gun mount. This is the same mount that I have on the King Tiger, and it's a highly recommended piece. And it's also very interesting that they include this with the tank. As in the past, you have to purchase this separately. Here are the Armor, Ar Armor Packs white metal tools. These are German AFV tools, and these tools are actually sold separately on his website in case you're not working on an Armortech tank. However, the Armortech tanks nowadays do come with these tools, as we can see here. In addition to the tools, they also come with the Armor Packs Tiger One turret track racks. Tiger Ones would have some sometimes would keep spare tracks mounted to the turret sides, and they were facilitated by these little latches that we see here. These here appear to be tool posts as well as track pins. The Armortech track on their newer production tanks are a lot like the real ones in that the pins, the track pins are actually held on by miniature cotter pins, which is a very nice addition and work very well. This is the Armor Packs Tiger Jack kit. Just some more miscellaneous parts that I'll go into more detail as the book progresses. Looks like to be castle nuts. Typically these are found on the mantlet and appear to be appear to have some spares. They might go on some other portions of the model and I'll get to that as I sort through this build. And these just appear to be some fasteners. Over here we have the tow cables. Now the tow cables are pre hooked up with their tow eyes already built into them, which is a very nice feature. From building their King Tiger, I can say that they have the perfect amount of length, and if built properly, you'll have absolutely no problem mounting these to the model. Here we go, your track pins. As you can see, they're very heavy, and they are all machined. If, I, if I'm able to zoom in, you can see the, the ends over there where the little miniature holes are drilled in. These miniature holes are for the lock pin, or the lock washer, as well as the cotter pin, which secures everything in place. Some O-rings. Basically, this would be for the swing arms. More to come on that. Digging further into the box, we have the track links. They're in these pre-sealed bags here. The links themselves are appear to be die cast. The track links are of very nice quality and work very well. They easily just clip together and don't need any fitting or sanding to them and are pre-drilled and all that is needed is for the pin to slide through and for you to lock it on the other side. And it appears that there's just the only thing left in this box are nothing but track links. As you can see, a lot of track links are going to be needed for this model. And that concludes this Project Start video for this 1-6 scale late production Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.